Hello, and thanks for tuning in to the 2021 Antimicrobial Resistance Option training on the Facility-Wide Antibiogram Report. I'm Heather Dubendris, one of the public health analysts that works on the antimicrobial use and resistance module. Today, I will provide a high-level overview of the antimicrobial resistance, or AR, option before diving into the main topic at hand, the AR antibiogram. We'll review the changes to this report and provide examples that show how to modify, run, and interpret it. To level set everyone, let's first take a quick look at the AR option in general. As you may know, the AR option is a component of the antimicrobial use and resistance module, which is part of the patient safety component of the NHSN application. The AR option has two primary purposes. Firstly, to facilitate evaluation of AR data using a standardized approach and definition. And secondly, to provide facilities with improved awareness of AR issues to aid in clinical decision-making and prioritization of transmission prevention efforts. Unlike some of the modules within the patient safety component, reporting to the AR option is voluntary. It is not part of any CMS quality reporting programs. There is one caveat to this, and that's that hospitals may choose to report to the AUR module to meet requirements for promoting interoperability. Promoting interoperability was previously known as meaningful use or MU. All inpatient facilities enrolled in NHSN and using the patient safety component can participate in the AR option. However, manual data entry is not available for the AUR module. Therefore, in order to participate in the AR option, hospitals must meet certain minimum criteria. Participating facilities must be able to collect numerator and denominator data electronically and then upload those data into NHSN using the required Clinical Document Architecture, or CDA, specifications. When submitting data to the AR option, it's important to remember that there are two file types. AR event files contain all of the information about a single AR event or a single isolate. Facilities will submit a file for each reportable event into the NHSN application. AR events can be submitted from all inpatient locations and three outpatient locations, the emergency department, pediatric emergency department, and 24-hour observation location. The second file type submitted for the AR option is the monthly AR summary file. This file contains a summary of patient day and admissions data. As a reminder, summary files are not submitted for individual patient locations. Currently, summary files are only submitted at the FAC-wide in level, but later in 2021, the application will also begin accepting summary files for outpatient locations, so for the emergency department, pediatric emergency department, and 24-hour observation outpatient location. When we talk about a single AR event, we are talking about individual isolate level susceptibility data for a reportable organism or pathogen. To qualify as an AR event, the isolate must be collected from one of the four specimen types listed here. Notice that these specimen types include both invasive, so blood or CSF, and non-invasive, urine and lower respiratory specimens. 
Isolates identified must be a pathogen listed in our reportable organism. And some antimicrobial susceptibility testing must be completed. An isolate qualifies as an event regardless of the results of this testing. So an isolate with an eligible pathogen that tested susceptible to all antimicrobials would still be submitted into the application. Some of our most common organisms eligible for reporting to the AR option in 2021 are listed here. However, facilities and vendors should refer to our AR option pathogen roll-up workbook, which can be found in the Antimicrobial Resistance Toolkit for a complete list of eligible organisms for AR option reporting. When you're looking at that toolkit, you'll see we also have developed an AR option pathogen roll-up reference guide to help navigate this workbook and determine which codes are accepted into the NHSN application. More information on the AR option can be found in previous year's trainings on our AUR option webpage. And links to some key resources will be provided at the end of today's presentation. But for now, let's shift our, pro our focus to the analysis reports that are available for AR option data within the NHSN application. There are several analysis reports made available for AR option data. These include event reports, such as a line list, bar chart, or the antibiogram. AR organism reports, so these would be line lists or rate table that provide details on events meeting specific phenotype criteria. And lastly, for, there's a summary line list for AR denominator data. But as I said, today we're focusing on the antibiogram. The AR FAC-wide antibiogram provides a table based on AR events reported to NHSN. The report displays a summary calculation, the percent susceptible for each organism antimicrobial or pathogen drug combination from all reported locations. This is a change as of the December 2020 release. Previously, the antibiogram displayed the calculated percent non-susceptible for each pathogen drug combination. The antibiogram report is available to both group and facility level users, and the report is modifiable, so it allows for customization of the report and its output. As I mentioned, the report now shows percent susceptible rather than percent non-susceptible. The per percent susceptible is a calculation made for each organism antimicrobial pairing, and it's simply the total number of isolates that tested susceptible divided by the total number of isolates tested. The percent susceptible will only be calculated if at least 30 isolates are tested for that specific antimicrobial. To increase the report's usefulness for facility and group level users, we made some additional updates to the report. These new filters and display options increase the ability to customize your output and the updates we made to the antibiogram were based on feedback from NHSN users and antimicrobial resistant subject matter experts. These changes include the ability to filter by organism category, fungal, gram negative, or gram positive, drug class, onset, healthcare facility onset, or community onset, age group, adult, pediatric, or neonatal, and location using several location variables available. The updates also update the display. So the display now appears with columns sorted by organism category and rows sorted by drug class. Running the antibiogram report without making any modification to the filters 
time period or output will produce a default report. This report will show tables by summary month, so a table will be generated for each month. These tables will include isolates from all specimen types, all patient ages, and all locations. The tables will include isolates regardless of organism category and will include both healthcare facility onset and community onset data. Let's take a look. So suppose you want to run the report with the default setting. After first generating data sets, to run the AR option FACWIDE Antibiogram Report, you'll click Analysis and Reports to get started. Next, you'll select the Antimicrobial Use and Resistance Module folder, and then the Antimicrobial Resistance Data folder. After selecting the report of interest, in this case, the facility-wide antibiogram percent susceptible, a pop-up box will appear that will offer the following options. You can run report, modify report, or export the data set. Since we're running the default report, we can select run report here. And here we are showing an excerpt of this default report. As you'll see, the report provides the data set generation timestamp, so we know that these data in this report are accurate as of 12-24-20 at 10.58 a.m. The header of the report provides the org ID, which can be important if you're a group user or user with access to multiple facilities, and it also shows the date displayed as the summary year month that the specimen was collected. So this first table includes data for specimens collected during January 2020. The report displays organism and columns sorted by the organism category and highlighted here is the header gram negative. So all organism columns beneath this header are gram negative organisms. The rows include the antimicrobial agents, and these are sorted alphabetically by drug class, which is why we see aminoglycosides first. Another thing to point out on this default report is that you'll notice some cells are gray shaded. So cells shaded in gray represent non-valid pathogen drug combinations. Users can refer to the AUR protocol for a complete list of all valid combinations. Oftentimes, modifying the output will be helpful. So let's look at an example customization. Suppose you want to review the resistance patterns for Canada species, and you want this report to include hospital onset isolates from critical care locations submitted to the AR option for the entire calendar year of 2020. You'll navigate to the report the same way as before. So after generating data sets, you'll click Analysis, Reports, Antimicrobial Use and Resistance Module, and then Antimicrobial Resistance Data. After selecting the report, this time we'll choose the Modify Report option. The modification screen is shown here, and the first opportunity to modify is the title. In this case, I've changed the title to reflect that only Canada species are included in this output. The title is free text, so you can enter whatever makes the most sense for you. When making updates to the variables included in the report, we always recommend that you check the box Show Descriptive Variable Names that appears near the top of the modification window. This makes the variable names easier to read. After selecting this option, next we'll select the Time Period option. 
To select the time period of interest, we'll use the drop-down box under date variable. And for our example, we want to show the entire calendar year of 2020. So we'll choose specimen data, date year, and then we'll enter 2020 in the beginning and end boxes. Next, we'll choose the filter button. So under filters, you'll first select the variable pathogen, and we're going to make sure that this report includes only Canada species. To select the operator, in this case, we'll select the in operator since we're choosing multiple pathogens. By default, when you choose the in operator, two drop down boxes are included. We can use these included boxes to first enter uh, two Canada species pathogens. Shown here, we've entered Canada albicans and Canada auris. And then to include additional pathogens in this filter, we'll click the plus button that's highlighted here with the number four. We'll continue adding drop-down boxes and selecting pathogens until all reportable Canada species pathogens are included. Since we're also interested in filtering to only critical care or ICU locations, we'll click the Add Rule button, which is shown here next to the number five. We'll select the Location Type variable in the drop-down option this time, and for our operator, we'll use Equal. Using the free text box, we'll enter CC, since this is the location code for critical care locations. We'll select the Add Rule button once again, and then enter the rule to restrict by onset. Shown here, we're restricting to only isolates where onset equals healthcare facility onset. So this will exclude any community onset isolates. The last modification we'll make is under the display header. Since we want to look at these data by calendar year, not by month, we'll select specimen date year as our group by variable. This will update our output to display a single table for 2020 rather than the default, which would show a table for each month. After making all these updates, we'll click Run. The complete report is shown here, and I just wanna add a quick reminder that the data shown in today's presentation are fictitious and for example only. So before looking at the results within the table, we'll take a closer look at our titles. So first you'll notice that the title at the top is updated based on the modifications we made to the output. So it reads Canada Antibiogram Percent Susceptible. Next, you can see a summary of how we've customized this output. So this includes our customized date range, it also includes the filters that we put onto the report. So as expected, this is going to show hospital onset, Canada isolate from critical care locations. Now that we've ver verified these filters, let's take a look at our results. The table is set up as the same, the same way as before with columns filtered by organism category. In the case of this report, they're all fungal and with drugs, uh, the drugs column filtered by drug class. The columns outlined in red here correspond to footnote number two below. So when data show as a period rather than a number, this means that not enough isolates were tested to calculate the percent susceptible. So as a reminder, a minimum of 30 isolates for a given organism drug combination must be tested in order for the application to calculate the percent susceptible statistic. So what this is telling us is that this facility, fewer than 30 hospital onset isolates in ICU locations were tested for any drug among Canada Oris, 
Canada parasilosis and Canada tropicalis isolates during the year 2020. Looking at the columns for Canada albicans and Canada glabralta, we see the calculation for percent susceptible is listed in the cells by drug. So as a reminder, these numbers represent the percent susceptible for that organism drug combination. And this is calculated at the rate per 100 isolates. If we consider the susceptibility for fluconazole, we can see that these data show 87% of healthcare onset Canada albicans and 91% of healthcare facility onset Canada globalta from ICU locations that were tested were susceptible to fluconazole. So that's a lot of information on the Antibiogram Report. So I just want to point you to another resource that provides similar detail on how to run and modify this report. Our quick reference guides are developed to do exactly this. So they are complete with example modifications and outputs, along with interpretations of those outputs. And the QRGs can be accessed on our AUR module homepage. Additional AR option resources that may be helpful as you analyze your AR option data are listed here. So these include our protocol, some previous training videos, and additional quick reference guides. Thank you. This concludes today's presentation on the AU FACWIDE Antibiogram. If you're viewing this training video during March 2021, Please submit questions to be answered during the live Q&A session by selecting the title of this presentation and submitting your question using the form located on the 2021 NHSN training webpage. Alternatively, if you are viewing this training video after March 2021, please submit any questions about the content of this presentation to nhsn at cdc. Dot gov. Thank you.